welcome to a new Plugin Guru quickie video. This is number 19, and in this video we're going to be giving you 15 minutes of the video tutorial that comes with the malicious silent patches. Uh, my name is John Limkul, and I'm introducing you to the video tutorial that I created. In fact, here it is. Here's 15 minutes, and we cover making a base patch. Hopefully, you, uh, you will enjoy this. And if you enjoy this, you'll love the full dual video tutorials that come with the silent patches or the video tutorial that I created for Toxic FM8 or for the Evil Razor. Um, all three of these libraries now include video tutorials that uh, really hopefully give you some good information. Everybody, I get lots of good feedback, lots of positive things of how this is helping people out. So hope you check them out. So enjoy and uh, see you later. Each time I play, when we trigger is turned on, see how it's starting and it's always the same shape? Turn off retrigger and watch what happens. Especially when we have two oscillators that have retrigger off. You'll see a dancing start to happen. They have two sawtooths. See how they're dancing and changing? And you can use the phase. Let's turn retrigger back on, and now it will be the same every time. See that? And you can use phase. It's a way to get meteor sounding envelopes to keep retrigger on, unlock it. From this to this. I like that for this bass sound we're going to make. Now for this, we're going to want the filter. So let's go low pass filter. And let me explain how this works. So you've got part A, two oscillators, and an envelope and a filter. B has the same two oscillators, uh, the amp envelope, and the filter. This down here, the filter control, it controls virtually like, like it's got cables connected to the cutoff and to the resonance of A and B together. So if this is all the way up, then it's like invisibly brought this cutoff all the way up. So I don't hear, I can move this and I don't hear anything and it's confusing to people. It's like, I barely hear any change. What's going on? It's because this is all the way up. So set this in the middle at least in the middle, maybe lower. Now you got room to play with. And the way we're going to do this, when you're making sounds like what we're going to make, <clears throat> you want to focus on the body. What does it sound like when it's resting? So I want to bring up the resonance because I want to emphasize this low frequency peak a little bit. Let's bring up drive, watch what happens. See how it's gotten really dark, but the body's become, look at how nice and big and round that is. Kind of sine wavy. I love sine waves. Sine waves is a nice pure tone, right? So, so now to, to uh, enhance this, because remember, this is kind of like a, you know, I live in Portland, Oregon, where it rains all the time. This is like a really cloudy day in Portland, but we know the sun is up there shining really bright above us. So even though I've got this really dark, I've still got the sun, all that brightness above that I can play with. <laughs> so let's go over here and let's turn on cutoff just to A. This is the A part we're working with. And let's crank this up. And these envelopes are so fast that right now you don't hear anything. But as soon as you start moving to K, watch. Cool, we like that. Okay, so we want to make this mono because this is going to be a just a bass and a lead sound. So mono. And we want portamento. So crank this up. 
This is sliding between notes. Set it to be legato, so that way it's... Now the difference between the two legato modes, just so you know, um, in, I guess, is their normal, which means, so when you play staccato, there's no portamento, but when you play and hold one and play the next note, it slides. So you can go. That's how you get all those cool bass lines. So if you're if you're in a sequencer working in legato mode, you'd want to make some notes where the release is past the attack of the next note. That allows it to glide. Okay? That's the trick to do that. Now, I like the sound up here, but it's kind of anemic up here. That's because I need some... Oh, I got key tracking up. Let's turn this down so we hear what it's like without it. Oh, it's... This is how it typically would sound. Kind of nice here. Up here, it's way too short. So you bring up key tracking, and this kind of adjusts the curve of the filter. I want a little bit more resonance, so let's bring up the... And these envelopes are so fast, I'm going to just bring up the attack a little bit. You can see right here is my value. So let's... That's one way to get different characters out of the sound is by having the attack and the filter. And I want it to be fatter. So let's go to B. Let's turn on one oscillator, down an octave, and I know I want it to be a sine wave. Without, with. And what I do a lot of times at this point is I start a drum groove to play to. little just like 7 dB at about 110. As you bring the high end down on the treble, it seems to catch more of the, the upper part of the body to thicken it. I'm going to turn on the compressor. Emphasis on the attack since the bass sound, that's perfect. Let's turn on the delay. And I want to change the time to be eighth notes. I'm going to turn off ping pong. And then I'm going to bring the high cut so that it cuts down high frequencies and it cuts down low frequencies. Bring down feedback really short so it's just a slap back. Then bring the mix way down. Now the release is clicky, so I can go to A and to B. Now, since this is malicious, right? Gotta have some distortion. 
And what I like to do is get a nice, really growly amount of distortion to bring their wet dry mix way down. So it adds some additional harmonics to the sound. And if we wanted to put it in a little bit of a space, you could turn on the reverb. No pre-delay. Bring up the damp. Damp kills high frequencies. Maybe no width, because we want just to be much small. So at this point, you have two choices, because we have the mod wheel. And we could assign it either to pitch, LFO, or to like filters that we could. That might be cooler to do. Let me show you how to do uh, the pitch LFO first. So you have two LFOs. Now, the difference between an envelope and an LFO. An envelope, especially with slint, uh, with FM8 and Massive, um, they have looping abilities in the envelope, so it gets very confusing. Here, it's really straight ahead. You've, you've got an, an attack decay sustained release based envelopes. It's very basic. LFOs repeat. So, and what we're talking about is modulating. And modulating is like me going over here and going up and down with the volume slider. That's the same thing, except I want it to be repeated with a certain shape over and over again at a certain speed. That's all an LFO is doing. It's a really low frequency, and they found that they could use that to change parameters a long time ago. So we could go over here, we could say pitch to A and B, bring up pitch here, and we still don't hear it because there's a gain. They do this for a very clear reason. Here's your speed, it's all slow, so speed it up. Now for this, I'm going to set it to free, so this way it's no longer based on time. The reason that they set the gain as separate from this modulation control here is because you can go over to the miscellaneous area and say mod wheel to LFO1 gain. And this way, I can change that knob with my modulation wheel. You don't see it actually move, but you'll hear it. Speed, right? around 5 hertz is a good LFO speed for pitch LFO. So let's keep it with pitch. For some reason, the default pitch bend range is 3, should be 2. We like this. So let's go save. Save preset. And we're calling this Z toot basic base. All right. Oh, check this out. This is one of the things why we had to upgrade to the beta version is it doesn't, it didn't allow me to name them. But the new one, if you click on this little button, it pops up with the name so you can go Z toot. So you could actually have this name be different than the name on the hard drive, but that would just be torture, so we won't do that. So go Z toot, save preset, and I like to click the preset so that it gets all the parameter sets so that it says, are you going to replace it? Yep. All right. All right. So in a minute, we're going to do a pattern, so hang on a second. 